Hey guys, it's Aislinn and in today's video I am doing my friend's hair. This is Aubrey. You've never met her before, but I've known her since I was like three. Yeah, we've known each other for forever. So we're gonna be doing her hair today. Normally her mom does her hair because she has a cosmetology license and did hair for a while, but her mom doesn't like doing color and I love doing color. So we're gonna be highlighting her hair today and we're also gonna be adding a little bit of color to her hair. We're going to do like a dip dye and we're gonna do like a pinky purple color. So that's gonna be exciting because I've never done dip dye on my channel before. So it's something different for you guys. Also we're doing foils, which again, I don't have that many videos on. I think I have one that I did on my mom so it's something new and exciting uh, and I'm really excited because she like doesn't do bright colored hair so she's gonna have like a little splash of some color and it's gonna look really cute so to foil today we're gonna be using my blonde me lightener and I'm just gonna be using 20 volume developer her mom normally does a highlighting cap on her which if you don't know anything about hair that's like a very old method to do highlights like nobody does that anymore in the salon so everybody does foils like if you go to the salon you'll see everybody using foils the highlighting is going to be different i think it's going to be better for her because when you're using a cap you you can't really pick where you're placing the foil so this way we can put the foils where we want them we can make her more blonde less blonde it's like really up to us what we want to do we're going to go ahead and mix the lightener up and then i'm going to get foiling these foils they're rainbow it's cute so I'm just starting by sectioning her hair and clipping each section out of the way. I'm starting by foiling on the front right section of her head. I should have started in the back and normally when I do foils on my mom and other people, I do start in the back of the head. The hair is normally darker in the back. Also, it's not as fine. Around your hairline and in your crown, your hair is a lot more fine and fragile and those are the places that it's going to break off first. Her hair is super, super healthy so I didn't have to worry about that but I still should have started in the back. It was just my first time doing her hair and I was nervous and I forgot to start in the back. It's really not that big of a deal, but in the future I will definitely start in the back of her hair. So when I'm foiling right now, I am using a diagonal back and I am just taking a very fine weaving and then touching up her root area. I am not dragging it down on her ends. If you watch me foil, you can see I'm leaving her ends out. The only reason I would be dragging down that lightener is if there are pieces throughout that weaving that are dark or have not been highlighted before, then I'll go ahead and drag the lightener down on those pieces that have not previously been lightened. But for the most part, I'm just leaving out her ends and I'm just foiling her all over. There are so many different ways that you can foil the hair. You can do it horizontally, you can do a diagonal back, you can do a diagonal forward. And then on top of that, you can take a lot of different sectioning techniques so that way the highlights look differently. Diagonal back is what I did when I was in beauty school and once I graduated, it's just like the most common technique that I'm used to. A lot of different people foil different ways and that's the best thing about using foils versus using a highlighting cap. With foils, you can decide what placement you want, if you want the highlights to be more blended, or if you want them to be more defined and a little bit more chunky. You can decide how much you want, how little you want, if you wanna do half inch sectionings, if you wanna do inch sectionings. It's very, very, very specific to what that client wants. That's why I prefer foils. So for Aubrey, I am just doing like every half inch sections, and then I'm doing like a very fine weaving. I'm not doing it super chunky or medium. I would say I'm doing like a fine weaving pattern. It just blends a little bit better. Also, when you're working on a diagonal back, it's going to blend into the hair a little bit better. If I were to take sections that were horizontal to her head, when I rinsed out the lightener, it's gonna be a little bit more obvious where the highlights are. So I personally like it when it's more blended and it just looks like overall blonde versus like big chunks of blonde in her hair. I would also love to break down what a diagonal back and a diagonal forward mean. Maybe in a future video, I'll touch on that because I really need to be holding a comb and explain it to you guys while I'm holding a comb and show you what that means. It's hard for me to just sit here and try and explain it to you without having like a demonstration to show you what a diagonal back or a diagonal forward means. I literally love doing foils so much. I think it's because I don't get to do them very often. Most of my friends when I do their hair it's like bright colors and we're just bleaching and then coloring it so I don't get to do foils very often so when I do get to do them 
I love it so much. It's like one of my favorite things to do. And I only really get to do them on my mom when I see her like once every six months. Other than that, I don't really get to do them very often and I really miss foiling. That's like one of the things that I miss doing. I also have so many boxes of foils. I just recently started getting some PR boxes from Framar, which is a professional hair company who does like capes, bowls, brushes. They're one of the most like well-known brush, bowl, cape companies in the industry. And I recently just started getting boxes from them and they've given me so many foils and bowls and brushes and they're absolutely amazing. I have like rainbow foils, pastel rainbow, tropical green and blue and yellow foils. So I would love to be able to use those and show you guys them because they're so stinking cute and I really want to be able to use them. So I might try incorporating them into like when I dye my hair so that way I can use them because I have like six boxes of foils and they're so adorable and I want to use them. So in some of these sections, as you see me apply the lightener on her hair, you will see me drag it down further. She did have quite a few pieces that were brown all the way almost to her ends. So if you see me, I apply the lightener to her roots. And then if there are pieces that are darker throughout her ends, I'll go ahead and hit those with lightener. Also, I apply the lightener throughout some of her mids in some of the foils just to brighten her up a little bit and lift her to a little bit more of a platinum shade. You can see in her mid shaft she does have some like darker either brassy or blonde or her natural color that has never been lifted before. So if you're seeing me drag lightener through that mid shaft it's because I'm either hitting her darker color that has never been lifted or I'm just lifting out some brassy pieces. Right here you can see there's like dark in her ends. So if you see me dragging it on her hair further down that's what I'm doing. Here in a second, I'm gonna spin her around and show you a 360 of what the foil placement looks like all over her head. I just wanted you guys to see all the foils completely done so you can see what they look like. All right, so I have all the foils applied, looking good. I'm gonna keep an eye on the foils and see how they're lifting. Probably like 30-ish minutes, I would guess, but again, I like to check them like every 10 minutes instead of just setting a timer and then like not checking them. I like to keep an eye on them, and then once I see that they lift to like a pale yellow color, we'll go ahead and rinse her. We're not gonna tone, she normally doesn't tone, so we're not going to, we're just going to lift her to a pale yellow, come back, and then we'll do the purple color, which I'm excited about. Okay, so we'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye bye. All right, so we're back. We rinsed her, shampooed her. We did not use conditioner because we are going to be using semi-permanent colors. You're not supposed to use conditioner. It's supposed to be on clean, dry hair. We've decided on some colors. I'm gonna do three different versions of purple, going from light purple to dark purple, so that way it creates more of that ombre and diffusion. I personally don't like it when dip dyes look like one solid line. I like it to be more ombre and diffused. So that's what we're gonna do today. I have five colors in front of me that we're gonna be mixing together. We're gonna be using Violet Dream and Purple Rain by Arctic Fox and we're gonna be using Plum Purple from Lunar Tides and Purple Haze by Manic Panic and then for our light color we're gonna be using this Splat Naturals Lavender they just released this color line I used Splat in high school but it's a completely different formula this one is conditioning based and made out of like really, really good ingredients that's nourishing for your hair. So I'm really excited to try this today. I do have a coupon code with Arctic Fox and Lunar Tides. I'll leave a link to their websites and my coupon code in the description down below. They're both for 10% off your order. So if you're interested in trying these, I'll leave all the information in the description box. So we're gonna be mixing these shades together to create three different variations of purple going from darkest to lightest. She wanted more of a pinky toned purple, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. A lot of these purples are pink toned, so that's why we decided on them. We have three purple bowls, because we gotta keep the aesthetic, you know what I'm saying? Here are the three color mixtures. This one is our darkest color. I'm just gonna be using this to hit the very tips of her hair. This middle one right here is going to be the main color, so this is gonna be mostly on her mids. And then we have the lightest purple right here and I'm just gonna use this to blend up into her blonde hair. So I'm starting off at the bottom of her hair and then working my way up. It makes it so much easier when you're applying color like this, especially when you're not doing one color all over. I have to be so careful not to get this purple 
on any of her other blonde pieces. We just need to get it on the tips. So I have to make sure my clips that I'm using to hold up the rest of her blonde hair stay clean this whole entire process because if any of those clips get color on them and I go to clip up her newly blonde hair, there's gonna be like lines of purple. So you have to be like super clean and organized when you're doing dip dye to make sure you're not transferring any of the color on any of the other hair, which is why I like to start in the bottom because then you can just bring down new sections on top of the color versus starting at the top, coloring the ends and then trying to flip that over the top of her head and laying it on top of like blonde hair. That would not work very well in this case when you're doing dip dye. I also feel like dip dye is one of the hardest things to do. It can go wrong so easily. Some people like that like blunt look where it's just like a line of color and it's very separated. I don't like that. I like it to be more blended and more of like an ombre dip dye. I just think it looks nicer, especially when you're having blonde hair, it blends in seamlessly. So when I'm applying this color, I start with the lightest shade, that light lavender color, and I apply that all over her ends. Then I go in with the middle shade and I ombre that into the lighter lavender. And then I go in with the darkest purple and I just hit her tips with that color because they're gonna soak up that color. And I don't want the purple that's super dark to be all over her mid shaft. Like I said, I want that ombre and that gradient. So I'm starting in with the lightest color and then working my way to the darker color. It's way easier to add the darker versus putting the dark on first and accidentally putting it too high up then you're gonna have to try and fix that by blending a lighter color into the darker. And you're gonna wind up bringing the color way too far up on the head. Before I started applying the color, I asked Aubrey how high up she wanted the purple to go and we agreed like right to the bottom of her ear. So that's how high up I'm bringing it. I also like it to be higher up around the face and then gradually get lower as it goes to the back of her head. So you'll see on the sides of her head, um, the color goes up a tiny bit further than it does in the back of her head. It just creates like more of a natural ombre look and I really like when color goes higher up around the face and then it tapers off lower in the back. I think it looks really, really nice and a lot more of a natural color placement. Also, the hair in the back of her head is obviously gonna be way shorter, especially with Aubrey because her hair is short. So the hair underneath the nape of her neck and in the back of her head in general is going to be shorter, which means there's going to be less room to apply the color. So you're gonna wanna apply less of the color in the back of her head and not bring it up as high. If you are nervous about getting the purple on her blonde pieces, you can always use conditioner as a barrier. So apply the conditioner all over her head like normal and leave out her ends and then just ombre the purple up into the conditioner. So that way, even if the purple does get on her blonde, there's that barrier and it's not gonna stain her hair. All right, got everything applied. I'm gonna let it sit 20 minutes. I'll see you guys when we get this rinsed out. We're back. We styled it with some beachy waves and it looks so cute. 10 out of 10, what do you think? I love it. I'm it looks so excited. really good. Okay, so we're gonna spin her around and show you what it looks like. Look how cute, guys. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Aubrey. Say hi to her in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out my Instagram. The link to that is in the description down below. I post way more of my everyday life on there. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I love you guys so much and until next time guys, stay weird. Goodbye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>